Hey everyone, I'm Herrick Kimball and today I've got a video for you that has been a long time coming. I want to tell you about my garden wind vane right up here. You may have noticed this wind vane in some of my gardening videos over the past years. That wind vane has been up there eight years now. I made it eight years ago, actually a little bit more than eight years. And at the three year mark, I did a short video about it. And I was so impressed with it at three years that I said I will shortly be coming out with garden wind vanes as a product, a Planet Whizbang product. That's my company, Planet Whizbang. I come up with ideas and, and I sell the ideas. And I said at the three year mark, that's what I was gonna do. Well, I'm just getting to it. It's been eight years, as I said, that wind vane has turned reliably on the slightest breeze and held in the strongest breeze in all kinds of weather for eight years. Uh, let me just tell you that before I came up with the concept of this particular wind vane, the pivot and how it's installed, which is unique, um, I had a uh, one of these little uh, whirly gigs. I made a little whirly gig, had a propeller on it and a tail on the back. And uh, I didn't put it way up high. It was down low. And I'm, I have woods over here. And so I, it was catching all kinds of, you know, uh, wind currents that were not reflective of the real wind current, which you can get when you get a, uh, a wind vane up higher and, and it's clear around it. And, and the thing didn't last, it broke. So I, the whirly gigs, I've been there, done that. I needed a reliable wind vane, something that would pivot and last. And I've got it, I've got it up here. And I'm gonna take it down, I'm gonna show you a close up and then in my next video, I'm gonna show you the product that I've made. It doesn't look exactly like this. I've modified it slightly. I've made all their versions here in the past month to test them out and see how they work. And I've come up with a final product. But the, the, the wind vane here is just about exactly 150 feet from my house. It's on the far end of my garden. House is over there, 150 feet away. And I can stand in my house and I can see this wind vane clearly. And that's something that I wanted in a wind vane. I wanted to be able to get up in the morning, look out the bedroom window or the bathroom window upstairs or the kitchen window downstairs and look out and see what the wind uh, vane was showing me. And that has, I've done that every day. I look at this wind vane. I look at it through the day. And I wanted a wind vane because I wanted it to help me know what kind of weather was coming. And the old timers, as you know, had wind vanes. And it wasn't just the wind vane that they used to tell what kind of weather was coming. It was the wind vane in conjunction with the clouds. Together, the cloud formations that they saw moving in and what was happening with the winds would uh, tell them what to expect as far as the weather. We were an agrarian nation back then and farmers needed to know this and they learned it pretty well. In the mid 1800s, the barometer came into uh, more popular use from the mid to the late 1800s, people were getting barometers. So the combination of uh, the wind vane, the, the cloud awareness and observation and knowledge and the barometer, those three things allowed the old timers when they didn't have television or radio or meteorologists to tell them the weather, those three things allowed them with in, in, incredible accuracy to predict what weather was coming. I kind of wanted to be able to do that, and to some degree I have, but I still have a lot to learn. I know that if that uh, points west or east, that's east, um, I know uh, we got a big storm coming, if it's solidly east. Uh, that much I know. The nice weather comes from the south. Uh, today, we're just got these soft breezes going around, all around. That's an indication that we're having good weather, okay? The storms often come from the, uh, the um, north, northwest behind me. The wind vanes that you see on top of houses, and it makes no sense for me to put one on top of my house. How can I see one unless I put a mirror in my yard on the top of my house? And I have a, a shop, the international headquarters of Planet Whizbang. I could put a wind vane up there but it's so close to the woods, it's not gonna get the true wind currents. So anyway, that's why we have a pole. 
and uh, I'll measure this pole, put it on the screen. I think it's like 11 or 12 feet high. You'll notice that this wind vane does not have a uh, indicators, the cross arms with the north, south, east, west showing. And that's because I don't need that. I mean, I live here. I know the sun rises over there, it sets over there. I know where my directions are, I know. With modern technology and parts, the hardware, I have a, uh, a, a wind vane that uh, turns very reliably and it has done so for over eight years now. I'm impressed with it, you'll be impressed with it. I think when you see it, how simple it is and, uh, and downright reliable. So what I'm gonna do is go up and get this wind vane down. And there's two ways to get it down. One's to go up on a ladder and you'll see that it lifts right out of the conduit pipe here. The other way to get it down, a little less risky, but a little more time consuming is to uh, just snip the two wires that I have holding it to the T-post and uh, just drop it down. That's what I recommend you do. You have either hose clamps up and down, a couple of them to hold it in place and loosen those and take the pole off. And that way you're not risking your life. But uh, I'm gonna use a ladder. So this is a six foot step ladder. And the recommendation on the side says not to go higher than three feet. Well, that's kind of funny. Uh, I gotta go a little higher than three feet. And there we go. That assembly fits right in the top of that one inch conduit pipe. I'll give you a close up here, show you what I got. So I'm going to talk to you here over in the shade because I get better picture quality. And picture quality is one of my uh, big challenges with these videos. But anyway, something I neglected to tell you that I wanted to tell you over there is that this wind vane points into the wind. In other words, the wind is coming this way, this way. If, uh, if this points north, that means the wind is coming from the north and it is referred to as a north wind. Okay, just to be clear on that, because I know there's some confusion on that. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how this is made and uh, what makes it so special. And in my next video, I'm going to show you the product that I've come up with based on this prototype. It looks different, um, not a lot different, but it's a little different, it's better. So what we have here is a wood beam. This is wood that I painted, it's pine, it's been up there eight years. It's worn, it's weathered, but it's not rotten. And it's not going to rot, at least not for a very long time. The reason being that uh, although it gets wet, it doesn't stay wet. It dries off very quickly. This tail and the point are aluminum for lightweight. This whole assembly here weighs one pound and four ounces, okay? Not very heavy, but it doesn't blow away. It's secure when it's up there. Believe me, this has been through some uh, big storms, but it has stayed right in place. It rides out the storm really nicely. Okay, so um, yes, we've got aluminum here and here. It's held on with uh, aluminum screw posts. And you'll see over here that I have weights. These are weights in the form of uh, 3 8 inch nuts with screws down through them. And you need to have weights on the point side because it's not as heavy. And this thing, this pivot, pivot assembly, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, must be directly in the center of gravity of this assembly up on top. You can't have it off one way or the other. It needs to be right dead center, center of gravity. Yeah, that's that. And what we have here is the pivot assembly. The pivot assembly is very simply a piece of one half inch conduit. It has a center shaft, which is bushinged inside here, so it doesn't wiggle around. And at the top is a fender washer. The fender washer is bigger than the one inch conduit that this fits down into, so it uh, acts as like a cap, all right? And here we have masking tape. The masking tape, acts as a bushing. It fits just right into that uh, one inch conduit. So it doesn't rattle around. It's a nice snug fit. Drop it in, take it out. 
it stays. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, blow away. It rides out the storm. Now, the pivot assembly fits into this pivot receiver. And this is HDPE plastic, three quarter inch thick. It's held on with a couple of uh, uh, heavy duty, uh, beefy, we'll say, uh, sheet metal screws. And at the top of this, right up in here, inside the pivot receiver is a ball bearing. So this shaft rides on a ball bearing, okay? And at the three year mark, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, at the three year mark, when I did that video, I put a little bit of white lithium grease on the top of this uh, pivot, but I haven't done any lubrication on this for the past five years, and it still turns uh, on the slightest breeze. It turns on a zephyr, and there is a little wear. I'm gonna take a close-up picture. I'll show it to you right here. You can see a little divot in the end of the, sh the shaft. And uh, that means that the shaft has worn and the ball bearing has not. And uh, I think I could get another five years uh, or more out of this without doing any lubrication or any, uh, any renewing of this. But if I wanted to, there will eventually come a time, I'm sure, when this needs to be like refiled flat and uh, reshaped to accept the, the um, to ride on that ball bearing, okay? I don't file it to a point. It doesn't work very well, I tried it, but almost a point. There's a little bit of flat on the top. You taper the sides and get a little bit of flat on the top, all right? So that's an overview of the concept here. Uh, uh, it, it's proven itself, that's why I give it the whiz-bang name, the whiz-bang prefix. Whiz-bang is a dictionary word that means conspicuous for speed, excellence, or startling effect. And this has earned that. It's, uh, it uh, has the speed, it, it's very uh, responsive to any wind. It whips right around in a, uh, as needed. You know, it, it tracks the wind. And uh, excellence, well, gee whiz, just look at this thing. Eight years, no issues. And startling effect, yeah. It's, it's got startling effect. It's, it's a whiz-bang idea for sure. After eight years, I know this is a whiz-bang. I can vouch uh, for the whiz-bang qualities of this garden wind vane. So there is an overview of the whiz-bang wind vane prototype. Eight years in the testing. And in my next video, I will do an unboxing of the new improved whiz-bang garden wind vane. The one that I will be selling. And uh, so that'll be in the next video. And also in the next video, I'll have a little bit more detail about how these are made. And if you're so inclined, probably based on what you've seen in this video, you could make your own. But you'll have a little bit more detail if you want to make your own in the next video. And also in the next video, I'll show you in more detail how the T-Post and the conduit uh, go together so that you can get that height, that freestanding height that you should have for a good garden wind vane. So that's it, folks. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.